Let's head on down to Texas, where Ted Cruz for President t-shirts are not selling rapidly. How are you, James? Well, I'm kind of ticked off tonight. Uh-oh. Jim Mars because is ticked off. I've been watching that FBI uh, film. Oh, of, well, uh, that, that doesn't make you sick. The shooting of uh, LaVoy Felicum. Yeah, I just, I just posted it. I saw it. They're lying bastards. That's they're the worst. Say. No, no, they're uh, homicidal they maniacs. They're murderers. I hate to think that I'm... Here I am. I've been starting to mess with having to get my tax stuff together like everybody else. Yeah. And I'm paying taxes to these murderers. And I use the term very precisely. Oh, you're too because kind. All you have to do is watch their own film. The guy comes out with his hands in the air. And then they shoot him down. And everything that is in the film that the FBI released totally matches up with the young singing girl who, who was in the uh, in the in the car. Yeah, in the car. Yeah, and she he says was. they stopped, and they were stopped, and he leaned out the window and said, "Hey, I want to go talk to the sheriff." You know, put his hands out the window, show he wasn't armed, and he said uh, they sat there for a few minutes, and the next thing you know, shots were fired at him. Now you can't see that on the film, but suddenly he takes off. Now, why would he take off? That's well, why he took he said, off. Hey, we're going to get killed. I got to protect these people in the truck. That's exactly so why he off. took off. And then, uh, of course, and then he hits the other roadblock, and he skids off into the snowbank, and then he gets out, and he's got his hands in the air, and they and they shoot him down, and they continue to shoot at the truck. Although, according to that scumbag that's out there telling the tale, saying, well, I saw it all, and he rushed the police, and that was a dumb thing to do. This guy, by his own account, was, like, was a mile back behind some other cars. He couldn't see what was going on. You'll be able to see the video. I'm going to post it shortly. <clears throat> Just uh, post it. All you got to do is the guy had his hands in the air. But here's the thing. Let's, let's say that he was clutching at his belt or at his pants or whatever, okay? like just Let's say he rushed the police. He was unarmed, okay? There was never any evidence of a weapon. He never fired a shot at anybody. The only shots were fired were by the government, okay, by the lawmen. All right. And if you stop and think about it, that you know that somewhere the decision was made is they had to kill somebody because they cannot allow somebody to stand up to the government. It's just the same thing that happened. He was he was sacrificed. Absolutely. Yeah. When you get stopped by the cop and yeah. he says you were going 10 miles over and you know you weren't. But and you say, no, sir, I wasn't. Uh, well, I'm sorry you were. And they will never back down. They will never say, well, you know what? I think maybe you're right. It's maybe worse than ever know. now, Jim. They're on such oh, a know. power now trip. They just kill you. Yeah, they have the power of life and death. They are gods. And they shot that man in the forehead. A sniper got him. And then two more rounds hit him, and then three more when he was on the ground. That's the word yeah, from they, Joel yeah, Skousen. Yeah, you can see that. You can plainly see that they continue shooting after he's on the ground. That's right. And, and they when continue to shoot at the truck that was filled with innocent five people. Five or six know, people these, in these there. Women, okay? And you can also <laughs> plainly see, at least I can, that this bullet hole's in the windshield. I mean, they were shooting at the truck. We'll never get to see that truck in close-up either because they're no, going to hide uh -huh. it. Uh, no. They'll crush it. Listen, it'll, it'll be let, like the airplane that supposedly hit the Pentagon. We'll never see a picture of it. That's, that's right. You know, has anybody ever stopped to think about that? Every time there's a major air disaster, they gather up every little piece of wreckage they can, and they go to a big hangar somewhere. And they reconstruct and it. To find out what's going on, and there's always photographs. There's nothing about the Pentagon. Folks, we are living in la-la land, and this we is, have murderers in charge. This is as bad as the Soviet Union, uh, Jim. It may be worse because of the technological advantage they have over no, us. No, I think it's worse, and I'll tell you why, for the simple reason that in the old Soviet Union, especially towards the end, the public, the general public, the general Russians, they all knew that their government was corrupt Correct. and inefficient, and that they were lying to them, and they, they kind of understood that, and that's why they would read between the lines in Pravda and their other propaganda assets. We, the vast majority of people who are not listening to your program, are still out there, oh, I'm um, thinking everything's doing okay and there's just a few rabble browsers and a few malcontents, and, but the government's there to take care of us. They're it, going to take care of us, all right. Oh, they are. They're going to take care of them, all right. And uh, if you think I'm if you think I'm making stuff up, just go ask a veteran. Veterans are asked to put their life on the line to defend this country, and then when they get 
damaged psychologically or physically or flat just worn out does the government take care of them did you, <laughs> no jim did you see the did you see the picture at the top of my home page of Donald Trump and the the double amputee oh, veteran. Oh yeah, with the uh, yeah. Is yeah. that a is that a, a a picture that is worth a million words? That uh, that man you know, I that's extraordinary. Seen Obama do anything? No. Uh, uh, you know, compassionate towards our military, except to gripe about having to salute the flag. And he so, doesn't even do that. He puts his hands over his crotch. Actually, please uh, please look at that picture. Uh, I don't mean to say you have to vote for Donald Trump, but look at the picture, understand who the man is. That just that picture is uh, absolutely timeless. When you talk about Lavoy uh, Finnicum and the murder of Lavoy Finnicum, let's tell it like this is this it has is, to go down is, in history it, it, as the execution. The I mean, okay, look <clears throat> again. Let's go back. Let's assume that the authorities are all telling us the truth, and he got out and he rushed those cops. Hey, he didn't have a weapon, and here here you got what ten, fifteen cops around there just tackling. Hit him on the head, you know. It is. Him, put him yeah. in cuffs, you know, drag him off. Why, why do you want to shoot him? And then why do you want to continue to shoot him when he's on the ground? They could have uh, tasered him. They could have tasered him. It's an execution, a political execution. They had exactly. to have somebody die. They picked the spokesman. <laughs> they the killed him. For the same reason they shot those kids at Kent State, just to uh, oh, yeah. as a deterrent yeah. to anyone who would try to stand up to the government. Very good point. Uh, then let me tell you another thing that... Uh, Joel Skousen reported last night. He has very good sources on this. He's really looked uh-huh. into it. When they got out, they were in the truck. He took off in the truck with four or five people. I forget how many, and they're all together. And that truck was being shot at. They all got down on the floorboards, or they would have been uh-huh. dead had they sat exactly. up. Dead. Now, he got to the second roadblock. After he was shot to death, executed, the others got out of the truck, and they said there were laser lights, dots, all over them. Each oh, yeah. one of them had, la- there were snipers all around there with laser sights, and they were all zeroed in, ready to pull the trigger. Right. They and all would have died. Thing, if you'll notice, if you'll notice in the film, they, they, as the girl said, they were firing incendiary bullets. You can see, you can see the flames, you can see them bouncing off the truck. Okay? So I think the idea was, they were hoping that that truck would blow up. And then and there goes all Oh, interesting. You know? And then they could tell us any story they want to, and there would be nobody to. Waco, repeat. burn it down. Waco. Exactly, exactly. Just fried corpses. That's it. Folks, this is the way your government operates because, let me tell you something, government is not rationality, it's not reason, it's not justice, it's not equality, it's sheer force. That's what government is. And in our government, even though we have local government officials who are pretty good people, we even have a handful of national uh, politicians and government leaders that are probably fairly good people. But when it gets right down to it, if you don't say what they uh, want of you, then they'll send somebody who's armed to take care of it. Let me tell you another thing. Uh, look at the Clinton death list. All right, there's one example. That's just a private... That's just a private... hundred now. Yeah, that's a private party operation, okay? It's not an official governmental death list, which God knows how big that is. But we have people in every single law enforcement department in this country of any size at all who are ready and willing and more than capable of homicide. They're maniacs. Yeah. They're killers. They are well, killers and wait. Sure, I'm sure you've carried this before, but one of the reasons that's egged them on and has caused such aggression among the police departments is because over the past several years, they've been receiving training both in and from Israel. How to kill. How to kill Palestinians. How to, kill, how to take care of those nasty subhumans, you know. That's what, that's exactly, Jim's right. They teach American law enforcement personnel how they address the Palestinian problem. They kill them. So the American cops come back here with the same kind of attitude. It's us versus them. They are the enemy. They are evil. We can kill them. And they do. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, we are, we are really at, at the edge of the abyss. Uh, as Jim knows, as many of you know, we are literally at the end of, of, uh, of our livelihood as a nation, as a nation state. We're going to lose. We're gone. We're gone. If we don't take it back, Somehow, and Mr. Trump is the only man who has even a prayer of doing it. 
Yeah, and frankly, uh, I worry about him. Because, I worry uh, about him every I, day. I have found out in my lifetime, Jeff, that when something appears to be too good to be true, it usually is. <laughs> all, that's uh, all accurate, and I was going to say something else. I can't remember what it is now. Oh, it had to do with that uh, Finnegan's Ford truck. Lavoy bought a very big uh, kind of uh, extra cab diesel probably a 350 Ford truck with a camper shell on the back. Somehow, that truck is so tough that nobody in that truck, and they say there were over 100 mm-hmm. rounds fired at it. I don't know yeah. that to be true. Let's say they 50. they weren't even wounded. <laughs> no. It's incredible. I mean, I what, mean, what seriously. What an ad for Ford. <laughs> I was, what an ad for well, Ford. You, I said it last night. You said it now. That could be, and it won't be, but what a hell of a commercial. I mean, that is a t- Ford builds tough trucks. Those people are so lucky. Jim's right. Now, I didn't know they were sending uh, incendiary or tracer type ammo into that truck, but you're right. They well, were trying to explode it. You the see tank. It on the film, there's little flashes. Yeah. yeah. Now, it may, be, it may be just sparks from bullets hitting the metal, the truck, but I don't think so. Yeah. She said they were incendiaries, and I believe that girl. I do. Yeah, I do too. I, I do don't too. believe that scumbag <laughs> McConnell that's out there. He penetrated the organization somehow, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, you you always hey, this is the old. Here's a rule of thumb for agent provocateurs. Yeah, and we know, and we know, you know, your listeners know, uh, every single uh, instance of terrorists being caught since nine eleven has always involved an FBI informant or undercover agent or a CIA. Well, there, there we go. <laughs> they are agents provocateur. They set it up, and then they bust them, and then they say, oh, look what we've done, and they get their budgets increased. Okay, now the rule of thumb of identifying who in some group is the informant is who gets arrested and then cut loose. Who walks free? McConnell did. Did he walk Oh, yeah. They wow. said he himself listened to his tape. They said, he said, well, they held me and then they let me go and they, and I'm hoping to get my truck back in a few days. Doesn't he realize that, uh, he was marked for sacrifice? Doesn't he get it? No, they don't because they are told by the government, hey, you're working for the government. We'll take care of you. Just like and they told Lee Harvey Oswald. That, that, you know, that, that, that means what they say. But you and I both know that the government will throw you away like he used Kleenex well, he's, as he's, quick as they can. I predict he'll be uh, dead in uh, six months or less. Yeah. Suicide or a hunting accident or something. You watch. Just remember that. They yeah. can't afford to have this guy on the loose if he was, as Jim and I both believe, uh, a penetrator. Well, and we know they were penetrators and they were agent provocateurs because the sheriff up there, uh, not the sheriff, the uh, fire marshal, yeah. uh, resigned he quit. in the little town because yeah. uh, everybody was upset because they said that the militia was following them around, stalking them, sitting outside their yeah. home. Guess now, who the militia them, was, folks, if you don't know. And, stuff, <laughs> and it was turning those people against the occupying uh, group. Yeah. Okay, But the fire marshal followed them, trailed them, and found out that they were FBI. And then he goes to the sheriff and tells him that, and they go, "Hey, sit down, shut up, don't say anything." So he resigned. That Come sheriff, on, that sh- wake that, up, wake up to yeah. what's going on in your name that you're paying your hard-earned money and taxes for. Yeah. That sheriff is a real uh, piece of work. That guy. and the whole bottom line of this whole thing is, is that they were trying to grab the Hammonds Ranch, and they were get, putting them under undue pressure from the Bureau of Land Management, which, by the way, uh, up until recently was headed by uh, Harry Reid's uh, 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 chief assistant. Yeah. Okay. So they and now they were trying to get all that property so they can sell the uranium rights to Uranium One, which uh, the top officials Uranium One have contributed. One hundred forty-five million dollars to the Hillary Clinton campaign. It's the T- oh, the Clinton Dome Foundation all over again. The Clinton Teapot Foundation Dome all over again. Yeah, and people go Teapot Dome. What the hell is that? It was only the biggest scandal in this country prior to Watergate. Yeah, and it took place in 1921, and it was when uh, the Secretary of the Interior was found selling uh, petroleum rights to oil companies out <laughs> of the public naval reserves in Teapot Dome, California. Mm-hmm. And oh man, was it a stink! And and uh, you know, off he went. And you know, that, back then, that was of course when we still had a republic, and when we 
they still had free press, and everybody learned about it, and it got straightened out. But today, they're selling off everything. 85% of Nevada is claimed by the federal government. Right. Almost 50% of uh, Oregon and 40% uh, of California owned by the government. Where in the Constitution does it say the federal government is supposed to own all the land? But hey, aren't we the federal government? Not anymore. And supposedly we are, no. but obviously we're not. No, not anymore. This guy McConnell uh, needs to be watched. Mark my words, he's going to end up dead. They, won't let, they will not let this guy loose if they made any kind of a deal with him, if they had anything going with him at all. Not anything. Yeah. I guarantee it. He's, that's, Did I he's ever gone. tell you the story of Walter Scheib? Uh, maybe, may, yeah, I think you did just to me on the phone once, but tell the listeners. I think they need to, speaking of the uh, Clinton death list, Walter Scheib was the, uh, the master chef yeah. at the White House during the Clinton administration and partially into the uh, George W. Bush administration. Uh, a year or so ago, there was a food magazine, published a big article, and they were kind of taking the presidents to task for not eating properly, you know, and I think they were mostly, uh, this article was probably mostly geared towards uh, Obama, who notoriously likes fast food, you know, junk food, and they were, you know, talking about their, that uh, this was not really good health-wise. Well, Walter Scheib, uh, I think, in a fit of trying to... Um, stand up for his former employees trying to do a good deed mm -hmm. he wrote a lengthy letter in response to this food magazine and he pointed out that no that's not really true some of the presidents eat quite well he said when he was head of the uh, clinton white house that hillary clinton insisted uh, that he only buy locally produced produce produce and and fruits and vegetables and that she even had a garden on the roof of the White House where she got her own, uh, you know, uh, uh, foodstuffs w without <laughs> no GMO. No, nobody no, knows uh, this. Pesticides, yeah. okay? And people have asked me every time I go talk, especially about my new book, Population Control, how they're trying to poison us. They say, yeah, but, but don't these wealthy elite, don't they poison themselves? No. <laughs> they don't eat the same way we do. Tell them what's so, served in the Monsanto cafeteria. No GMOs. <laughs> no GMOs in the in the Monsanto cafeteria. No joke. And uh, so anyway, and so he's telling this now. See what he didn't realize though is that Hillary's trying to run for president, and Hillary, one of her largest uh, donations, uh, <laughs> uh, campaign contributors, is Monsanto, and that she has consistently been pro GMO publicly and pro herbicide, pro Roundup. It's got gel face in it that you know kills you, and so boy, it makes her look for the I'm like the hypocrite that she yeah, is. Yeah. And so poor old Walter, he kind of he moves out to New Mexico, and he goes off to take a walk, and he's not seen for a couple of weeks. And then they finally find his body God. lying in a shallow creek, and it took them days to try to come up with some kind of uh, cause of death, and they finally said that he just he drowned. He, he slipped and fell in and drowned. 